So Sony just released a new firmware update, firmware 3.0 for the A7S III, but there's a feature that no one's talking about and I think it's huge, kind of was snuck in there. I also want to talk about the general update and some of my favorite features and why I think it's refreshed this old camera, but it's also kind of confirmed my suspicions that Sony's going to discontinue the S line. Let's dive in. All right, if you guys haven't watched my video already, I made a video a couple weeks back, camera rumors, camera suspicions that I've kind of gathered all over the internet. Some of them seem to be very valid. Some of them seem to be wild, but it was in regards to the A7S IV, the FX3 Mark II, and even Canon C70 Mark II. There was quite a bit of rumors out there saying that Sony is going to discontinue the S line and the FX3 is going to completely replace it, the FX3 Mark II, which at the time I was kind of iffy about. I was like, well, this is still an extremely popular camera. A lot of people love the viewfinder, but now I've seen some additional rumors saying that Sony's working on a digital viewfinder or an update to it that will go directly to the hot shoe. So if you wanted it, you could put it on the FX3. So where does this kind of leave this camera? Well, with this new firmware update 3.0, I don't know, I'm like really suspicious now. I kind of get this feeling that this is the last real big update, sort of a last glory update to the A7S III before they discontinue it. That's how it feels to me. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment below. I really do feel like now those rumors may have some weight to them. Okay, as I mentioned in the intro, there's a huge update that no one's talking about. It was kind of snuck in there. It's buried in the menu systems and it's not automatically on. So you wouldn't know it's there unless you're looking for it. But I was kind of going through the menu systems and I noticed that now there's this new menu that's called anti-dust functions. So if you scroll all the way down to setup and then you want to go to number 12, setup options you will find going down to the third setting, anti-dust functions. And you still have your sensor cleaning. I think that was already there, but now you have shutter on power off. This is huge. If you enable that, what it basically does now, when you turn off your camera, and I'll demonstrate it right now, the shutter will go down and protect the sensor. Now it's not instant like with the Canon cameras. It takes a little bit of time, but it does, it goes down, and it protects the camera. This is huge. We wanted this feature to begin with. This should have been a feature at launch, right? I really hate having the sensor just exposed. And now you can turn it off. You'll hear a click, keep the lens in there. Once you hear the click, remove the lens and you can do a lens swap in a safe environment with the shutter going down to protect it. One thing to note though, it's not perfect. For example, on my Canon R5 or the Canon line, the R line, if you take the lens off, it automatically senses it and the shutter goes down to protect the sensor. Sony doesn't do that. It just activates when you power the camera off. So I wish it would have been detecting if the lens was being removed. That would have been great because then it automatically comes down and you're good to go. But it's in there. Huge update. Another huge update is now you have lens correction, but now you also have focus breathing. And that may or may not be a gimmick to you. It's in there now. If you have a lens that's a little bit on the heavy breathing side, you can correct it. And you now also get 4K 4096 by 2160. This is a little bit wider 4K. Why does that matter? It may not matter to you. I think for YouTube, if you're doing YouTube videos, it's not gonna mean much. But if you're doing client work and you have a cinema camera, you can now match the footage. So if a client's asking you for that specific 4K, you have it now. Likewise, you have true 24P. They didn't remove the other one, 23.96 or whatever it was, but you do have 24P, so they added more frame rate options. Again, might be significant, may not be for you, but I think it was kind of long overdue. We also now have on-screen quick menu touch functions. You can now 
swipe left, swipe right, and quickly get some of those fast, quick menu functions like picture profiles and, you know, changing your ISO or your white balance or whatever. And you also have the record button now. You can hit record right there on the screen. So if you're doing like, you know, uh, the screen's flipped out to you, then you can hit record without having to try to find the button. It's a big feature, but I want to talk about it specifically because when I first did the update, I swiped and it was there and then it was frozen. I couldn't swipe away. It wouldn't go away. And it's kind of a nuisance because it's blocking your field of view. So when you're trying to shoot something, you have all these buttons now that are on there and it's hard to see what you're actually shooting. I think it's a bug, but it's only a bug when you first update because what I had to do was I went into the menu systems. Again, it's in setup. And if you go to number five, touch operations, and then you have your touch operations on, go to touch panel settings, go to shooting screen, and then you'll find it on swipe right, swipe left, swipe up. I have swipe right on icon display left, and I have swipe left on icon display left and right. That's just how I personally like it. And then I have the swipe up for the functions menu, which is also great, it's fantastic. But I had to turn them off and then turn them back on and then the swipe away feature worked. So if you're wondering why it's stuck, it's glued on your screen, I think it's just an initial bug when you first update, but after you update and you just toggle it on and off and then customize it any way that you want, right? But it should work after that, it should go away. You also have the new tile menus, and this is a feature that's shared with the FX3. So this is actually kind of neat. It's very intuitive, very well organized, and you have all of your major camera settings right there for you to quickly change. And I love it. <laughs> you have menu one, menu two, again, long overdue. Really, really love this setting. Okay, there's a lot of other updates. Some of them are minor, some of them are huge. For example, you can now, use the Crater app and the camera monitor app where you can remotely monitor things. I haven't set that up yet, I'm having issues. It keeps telling me it's not connecting, but that's cool, right? We can use our phones now to remotely control this camera. I just actually did a video on my gripe with external monitors and how like the Ninja Animals 5 or Hollyland, Mars M1 or whatever, you can't control the camera settings, right? It's literally just a viewing monitor and that's it. I wonder now if you can with the USB-C or some other way of, you know, connecting to a monitor. Anyway, so that's basically it for this video. If you're looking for a full overview on how to update and, you know, all of the features, there's a lot of great videos out there. I wasn't gonna make another video just regurgitating the same information. I do wanna note that I did have some problems with the firmware. Not with the camera, the camera's fine once it updated. At first the swipe left, swipe right thing was kind of weird and buggy, but other than that, everything's fine camera wise, but getting the firmware on my computer and actually getting it to update, there were some weird permissions that I had to do and I had to like turn off my Mac, reset it and get into the startup settings to allow permissions and things like that. I actually just read the notes, the installation notes on Sony's firmware update page and they walk you through it. So if you're having that problem, read through the notes. Sony actually step-by-step -step tells you how to get through that. But once I did that, it's a two files. The first file took about 30 minutes and that's just a 2.15 firmware update. It's like a bridge. And then the 3.00 firmware update was another 30 minutes. After that, the camera was good. Make sure you have a fully charged battery, because I remember I had the battery in there at 100%. My batteries are kind of old, but when it was all said and done, I think it was 50%. So, you know, if you don't have a fully charged battery, you may be rolling the dice. Don't brick your cameras. Take it seriously. Just kind of give you guys my perspective. I think it's worth updating. I didn't update right away. I waited a week. That's why this video is coming out a little bit later. To kind of test the waters to see if there's anything iffy going on, but it looked fine. It wasn't a big deal. I updated. I think it makes the camera feel new again. That's it for me, guys. If you found this video informative, please consider subscribing and joining our channel memberships. I'll catch you guys in the next video.